We are back with another review of The Mandalorian episode... Not again. Book of Boba Fett, episode six review. Let's rock it! Oh yeah, welcome, 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 welcome. All right, we were talking about... Uh, yeah, it is Boba Fett, but I'm starting to <laughs> forget about the fact that it's about Boba Fett. It's pretty much just been about The Mandalorian the last couple of weeks actually so uh here we are yeah. but hey you know we're having a good time so we are going to review episode six of the book of bubble fett and this was called uh from the desert comes a stranger uh, who is the stranger <sighs> who is that who was stranger? that actually i don't even know what wasn't really a stranger we we know him from the end of, or was it the end or what part of the mandalorian was was uh you talking about Cobb? Cobb? oh yeah. that was a uh, beginning of season two of the mandalorian Okay, yeah, so. Yeah, so if you remember, by the way, Cobb Vanth, played by Timely, T- Timely, Tim- Timely, Timely Oliphant. Timely Oliphant. We're going to go with uh, Timothy Oliphant. I just like saying his name. Anyway, yeah. yes, he originally had Boba Fett's armor at the beginning of season two of The Mandalorian. And so That's here he right. is, still the marshal of uh, this whole area. They've changed it out of Freetown. <laughs> Freetown. It's like, yeah. Okay, that's really. It's fun, like a town, a town of like what ten people it looked like. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's, you guys got a great army of ten. It's great. We're gonna have a fun time. But um, all right. Well, we're gonna jump into our thoughts immediately. I, I'm gonna go first and just say that I, I seriously thought this was the best episode of Boba Fett yet, hands down. I still, I'm actually thinking it was in the top. Maybe not my favorite, but in the top of favorite episodes from The Mandalorian, even just because of how they did it. Loved it. Thought it was very nicely done. Yeah, it's pretty much 100% focused on the Mandalorian and the story behind the Mandalorian. Yeah, we get Grogu and Luke and Ahsoka and Cobb and, oh, we get, uh, ooh, maybe we'll talk about him in just a minute, but um, mm, yeah, Cad Bane, Cad Bane. We'll talk about him. All right, anyway, that was pretty <laughs> exciting, by the way, for me, too. So you get all this stuff, but it's definitely very... Mandalorian focused. We get about 30 seconds or so of Boba Fett and that's it again. So there you go. What were yeah. your thoughts? So just overall, we, we have, we have a little bit of a dichotomy here. I, I, I didn't hate this episode, but I think it focused too much on Grogu for my taste and that overshadowed any good parts for me. Uh, honestly, the, the cute factor uh, with Grogu really turns me off at this point. Um, I got enough it's of it in the Mandalorian. It has been overdone, and yeah. they continue to, in my opinion, overdo it. I think so. I've I've kind of become oversensitized to him. Mm-hmm. I, I liked him at first, but then as the Mandalorian went along, I started getting sick of him, as as I'm sure some other people did. Um, and honestly, the the parts you know the, the the parts in this episode with Luke and Grogu, especially with Grogu. I found myself literally falling asleep during those parts. Uh, <laughs> I try. I like. No, I started nodding off, and I, I, you know, I, I didn't miss anything, but it was just, it was just too slow for me for some reason. Yeah. And I understand that this was an important episode and that it re- reintroduced Grogu and what he was up to, mm-hmm. uh, but not much happens to move the plot along. So, ironically, this was my least yeah. favorite of the series so far as a result. <laughs> yeah. Very interesting. I know. All right, so we are 100% on opposite scale of this one. Yeah, my favorite of the of the series, your your least favorite. <laughs> right. So, oh, that's fascinating. You know, I I will agree though on the the Grogu factor. It's been overdone and there was a lot to. And honestly, too, one one of the things I wrote down in here is Grogu must be kind of a frustration to teach. <laughs> like he's got well, yeah, a frustrating he's... student because he's just like, ooh, ooh, you know, everybody's well, like, all cute. And, and I'm like, yeah. I don't know. But um, yeah, he's like a he's like a pre toddler in some ways. Yeah, he is uh, in, in his demeanor. He's a pre toddler. But, but so here's a lightsaber. His... <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> but but the, what I was going to say was at the same time, even though he on one hand, he acts like a, a infant. On yeah. the other hand, he does display some intelligence at times. So he's, he's kind of this, uh, you know, double edged thing. So I don't know. You know, I, I really liked the scene between Luke and Grogu personally. Now I mm-hmm. agree that they're overdoing the cute factor, but what I think I loved about it is that it was just a wonderful nod to when Yoda was training Luke and now right. Luke is training Grogu. 
of course, that's what they were trying to get out of it. You know, they were trying to bring Absolutely. back the feels for all of us, which was nice. But I really liked it. I thought it was nice. I liked the progression that we saw. Uh, I mean, there were some funny things like the Cyclops frogs. Those were awesome. But <laughs> the truth is, is that you're you're right. They did focus a little too much on Grogu. He was a little frustrating, but it still was just a really, I don't know, it was just a neat sequence for me. Now, yeah. one thing that I thought was very interesting, and I I don't, I mean, obviously they're they're, they're veering away from the books. We know that they're bringing some of the book lore in to Canon. We never expected them to follow the books entirely, No. but in this particular Canon, now we're finding out that Grogu is Luke's first actual student. So that was interesting because I thought Ben Solo was one of his first. Yeah. I thought, I thought the solo twins were his first, according to the old novels from like the nineties or whatever. But of Uh, course the solo twins aren't Canon. Right. Yeah. But Ben, I thought was one of his first students and then, became you know ended up becoming his last student i think but then again too uh i guess that would make sense because technically let's see luke and so if we're looking at the current timeline which is about five years past return of the jedi han and leia should be married right. i think uh oh, i sure. don't know if they have kids yet they might uh maybe maybe they do maybe maybe ben's a, a like a little kid right now and maybe he's about right. ready to enter into luke's oh maybe we'll see wonder if we'll see Ben little Benny Benny uh, in the next episode. Mm. I feel like if, if we don't see him in the next episode, if they, if they do, do, if they do their due diligence, we will see him eventually as a child. I think yeah. that we will. Yeah. I'm going to predict we're going to see Han Solo and Leia and little Benny next, next episode. I'm just going to predict it. Okay. We're going to go with yep. that. All right. Yeah. We'll see. But anyway, I, now let's talk about Luke's CGI really quickly. Yes. Yeah. Let's do I personally thought now, granted, I was I was not watching on my full, you know, 32 inch 4K monitor when I was watching this. Oh, so you just outed yourself. There's people watching going, I know. 32. Really? That's it. Oh, it's just it's just a 32 <laughs> inch, but it's not bad. I mean, that's my monitor that sits like right in front of my face. You know, uh, I've got a 34 inch widescreen, too. I'm sorry. It's not that big. Some of you guys are out there with like 60 inch monitors stuck two feet from your face. You know, I'm oh, sorry. Size, I'm sorry. Size doesn't matter. Brian, size, size matters doesn't not. Matter. No, mm, judge me. But no. So I was noticing, though, from my TV, though, not from the 4K monitor. To me, Luke's CGI looked really good, like really surprisingly good the mouth you know how they never can get the mouths right or the eyes yeah eyes well yeah. eyes are getting a lot better but mouths there's yeah. always something and and you know there's still something about luke when he's talking you're going okay it's still not quite yeah. right but dang it was it, it's the best i've seen yet and it was i think the best cgi that i think the mandal or the man i keep saying it dude book of boba <laughs> fett has you can done be forgiven yet. i know well i think we're all confused what did you think about the cgi well I thought it was, I agreed. I, I, it was amazing CGI and I, and you can tell that this is, you know, they're, 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 they're doing little increment steps up. Every time you see good CGI, yeah. it gets a little bit better. Uh, but my problem with it, if it, if you could call it a problem was it didn't quite look exactly like Luke in, in return yeah. of the Jedi. Yeah. It looked like a slightly different person. So I, at, at, and as a result, at first I thought, is that, cgi luke or is that an actor they got to sort of, which is to their credit that mm-hmm. means if, if they could if they confuse me even for a moment and again i i quickly decided of course that's cgi but at first i didn't know and that's to their credit uh, they did such a good job with it that that it was like is that really cgi or not so i agree it's it was fantastic i don't have all of the backstory of what they're doing but i do know that there's a an actor that's acting as luke doing the motion capture kind of stuff. Okay. Probably. Okay. Now I don't know this for sure, but I would assume, I would assume that Mark Hamill's doing motion capture for them because that would make the most sense. And then they're CGIing his old face, you know, I don't know. I know he's doing the voice. Mark Hamill's doing the voice for sure, but yeah, you know, I don't know. I'd like to see it behind the scenes on this one. I would too. Speaking of the voice, um, I noticed, and maybe you noticed this too, when Luke spoke, I mean, all the time when he spoke, he spoke very slowly Mm -hmm. and, and he enunciated everything he said. And it seemed odd to me, like, uh, it's like, like why, why was he not, I mean, it was just a slightly slow thing that put me off on it. You know, it's like, why is he talking so slow? Because Mark Hamill naturally doesn't sound like that anymore. So okay. if you know Mark Hamill, he is a he is a voice master. He can do yes. all kinds of voices. It's amazing. Right. I went back and actually watched a few scenes from The Last Jedi 
And in that movie, you can tell it's just him talking. Mark Hamill just talking as he is. Right. You know, he's what is right. he in his 60s or something, I think. Yeah. So, you know, people's voices change, unfortunately, as you get older. And he had a different he had a different way of talking. Well, of course, okay. if he were to talk like that here in Book of Bubble Fett, it would sound like he was his 60 something year old self, not his what is it, 20 something or whatever he is, 30 something. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. So as a voice actor, when you're trying to be precise on something and not allow your natural tendency, you do have to, you have to be more intentional about it. And so I think in this particular situation, he was probably trying to slow it down. So it didn't sound like he was older. And also, you know, Luke was at this point in his journey to be fair to the story. He was trying to learn significantly more amounts of peace. You know, he had, He'd flirted with the dark side, as we know. Right. Probably there's something that happened in the five years in between where he flirted even more with the dark side. Mm. So it's probably his way of, of being calmer and more at peace. And, you know, like I said, I would have been frustrated like crazy trying to teach. Bro, bro. I would have been like freaking, <laughs> you know, punted him across the, the, the yeah, psh, you know, do it a little, uh, soccer pick up more kick, of them. <laughs> and Don't just look, pick up one. <laughs> What are you doing? Put the dang frog down. It's a Here, cyclops. This. Anyway, uh, I, that, that's why I'm not a teacher. Anyway, so they, <laughs> he's so calm with him, though, and I think that was part of it, too, as they were trying to explain, regardless of the frustration. Now, right. also, Ahsoka, he says something along the lines of, you know, he's talking about Grogu. Luke says, sometimes I wonder if his heart is really in it. And Ahsoka responds with, so much like your father. And I was just I like, remember that, and I was like, wait. Uh, because, like, he, when he said that, Ahsoka said, "Sound you sound so much like your father or something like that, didn't she? She just said so much like your father. Okay, so, but I wondered about that as well. What did she mean by that? Well, I'm not entirely sure. I'm wondering about if his heart is in it. Is like, I don't know, because all she said, but the whole point of or where I, I don't really know what the, you know, she's got all her little moments of wisdom. Right. What I loved about that, though, is, is you know, you think about Ahsoka's journey and, you know, she's a youngling under the tutelage. She's, you know, Anakin's apprentice. I mean, this is really cool. Like you think about Anakin wasn't very old at the time, you know, she grows up through that. Anakin turns to the dark side. She sees him as Darth Vader and now she's working with Luke. I just think that's so okay. cool. So there's a lot of really neat, I think, peace that Ahsoka has. I mean, she's been through a lot. So if anyone's ever seen the Clone Wars or Star Wars Rebels, if you've not seen those, I guess would be the way to say it. I would highly recommend watching them. I know they're animated. Some people don't like that, but it's really worth it. The story's amazing. You get to learn all about Ahsoka and her journey. Now, one thing I'll mention, just a little bit of a, again, a nitpick. I like the nitpicks here. I like doing that. You know, yeah. in fact, there, so there was a Star Trek, the next generation nitpickers guide or something like that. And it was so <laughs> fun to read and like, dude, what did they do there? So I'm going to nitpick because it's fun. My nitpick it. here is that her head tails, you know, um, mm-hmm. she, they looked like her snips. They used to call her snips. That's what Anakin called her. When she's younger, and in fact, when any Togruta is younger, everything's a little bit shorter, you know, on the top and on, on, on the part here on the shoulders. Okay. As they age, you know, the tails grow down over their body. And also the little, I don't even know what these are called, but I guess it's just all called head, head tails. They grow yeah. up more. And so she has much, but she, in this episode, it was very small and it looked like her youngling self. And I thought, oh, ooh, that was a, no offense, but that was a little bit of a, Attention to detail they missed there because she's significantly older. Either way, you know, of course I love Ahsoka. She didn't have a whole lot in there, but, um, you know, for me, I think the, the most exciting thing for me was, was seeing the Mandalorian going to whatever planet that was. I'm not even entirely sure. And then, Oh yeah. I don't remember the planet name was, but it looked like Southern China. Yeah, that's exactly. what it looked like. <laughs> so they're going, which was you know, beautiful. <laughs> yeah. He, he runs into R2 D2. That was fun. You know, you're seeing some of those huts that if you remember from the last Jedi, which I know most of us didn't really like that movie, there's huts all over that Island that Luke had exiled himself to. Oh Same yeah. The exact one where he style. drank the blue milk directly from the, the green tea, milk. Wasn't? Yeah. <laughs> the green milk, yeah. You can milk anything with nipples. I, <laughs> I don't know, dude. Um, I just thought it was kind of cool that they were kind of showcasing those huts and it was like seeing that. And then of course, when I saw Luke, I got really excited. Not exact. I was like, yes, Luke and Grogu. Well, I was like, <laughs> yes, R2. That's what I, that's what I got was me too. excited. It's like, oh good. R2's in this episode. Well, I know as soon as I'm seeing that, I'm like, oh, I'm getting excited. This is cool. So yeah, I'm with you on the Grogu stuff. It was a little bit over I, nothing against him. I actually like Grogu. I'm ready to see Grogu mature. 
and get past yeah. his infantile years. Let's move him into, yes. you know, I'm ready for that. Yeah. And then of because course, we, Ahsoka, I was excited. So all of that got me really excited about the episode. We all love Yoda, right? Everyone of loves course Yoda. We do. Yeah. So baby Yoda Grogu is going to become a Yoda someday. And that's awesome. I just, yeah, you're I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I wish they would get to it. Not, yeah. not like he would suddenly become 900 year old Yoda, just that he would become a more mature adolescent from his toddler. So get out of his toddler years. I mean, yeah. it's just, it's just too annoying. I'm sorry, guys. It's just too annoying. I agree. I mean, and it's, they're, they're going a little too long on it. I, at this point, it would yeah. have been kind of like, okay, he's matured a bit. He's not quite as, let's move him forward. Now I will right. say this though, talking about the nitpicks, here's a reverse nitpick, meaning that I'm not nitpicking this one, but I mm -hmm. paid attention to the detail and I got this one right. Is that Luke's lightsaber ignition and also sound was dead on. So thank you for getting that detail correct. Nice. At least. Yeah. All right. I wanted to bring up a little more on the, the training aspect with Grogu though, was what was going on? And I'm not entirely sure, but you know, he was kind of saying, remember. And so he's oh, yeah. seeing something as, as an infant before something happens, but there's two Jedis yeah. that were defending him and then they get killed. By and then the you see the clone troopers. Yeah, you see the the well, and that's the thing. So it was the Clone Wars, right? After that, it was right. probably Order sixty six. So we know that he's been around that long, at least. Yeah, yeah. Which actually is quite quite some time. Um, and but, you see one of the sabers roll, and I'm not quite sure if we were supposed to know who that was because at first I thought, wait, is that Qui Gon? That's not Qui Gon. Of course, he died a long time ago. So that saber looked familiar though, but hmm. I couldn't place it. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't. I, don't know. I didn't catch that detail. If anyone knows so. that, let me know. But you know, Grogu is a long-lived species, you know, uh, and so it makes sense that even as he would still be an infant, even how like 20, 30 years after the events, right? So yeah. Um, well, let's see. Order sixty six was oh gosh, see math is hard. I have to go. Back I know, and right? Remember, yeah. There's something in the mm, is it twenty or is it? Yeah, it's at least twenty. Twenty something, close to thirty, maybe. Let's say he's at least around thirty as an okay. infant. You know, somewhere in there. But that's kind of whatever. Cool. All right. So there you go. That was kind of the whole training. I loved that part. But the other thing that I really love too, and maybe you liked this a little bit more though, is, is the whole Cobb Vanth story a little bit. Half did, of it. Did you, I really okay. enjoyed the, 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 the very first part of the episode where Cobb confronted those pikes doing a, some kind of spice deal on his land. And he showed him what's what and kicked him out. And then he did something very, uh, very interesting. He kicked over the box of spice that was worth yeah. more than his town, quote unquote, and let it blow away into the wind. <laughs> he, like, he didn't care about the money. He didn't say, okay, I'll sell this and, and whatnot, which I thought was both, both noble and impractical at the same time. <laughs> so, yeah. But it made it, but it did make a point. They were making a point by, by that scene, obviously that he, he didn't care what, what the money was about or anything like that. All he cared about was his community and that it did not get ruined by this, syndicate. That's so, pretty impressive. Yeah. To have that kind of, of nobility. It's, it spoke to his character and that's what they were going for, obviously. But the part near in the middle of the episode where, or near the end of the episode where he had that okay corral scene with, uh, with that, uh, syndicate bounty hunter or syndicate representative, what, whoever that was, that was, it was just too, okay. It was too okay. Corral for me. It was too contrived. It was just too stereotypical, honestly. Where well, they were, you know, they were both in the middle of the street and they, and it was really yeah. drawn out as well. I was like, come on, get on with it, guys. Someone shoot someone else. <laughs> so, so that I, didn't, I had a problem to, with that. Yeah. That goes back to, to Clone Wars and Rebels. Cad Bane is a badass. Like he is. Oh, that, that's one who of, I was. Yeah. You do not want to mess with him. The guy survives. Uh, I mean, he is a bounty hunter. He, he survived Jedi's. And I mean, he's been around for a while. Okay. So yeah, when he showed up, I was like, no way. Like that is so yeah. cool. So again, if you've watched Clone Wars and Rebels, you got excited because that was awesome. Right. He's one of those guys so, though, that just doesn't lose. Like it's amazing how many episodes they tried to kind of take him out and he just hmm. kept surviving. He is a very traditional, like old West style bounty hunter. That gun that you okay. saw is actually, you know, it's, it's so it, it's intended to be that way. He's been that way throughout the, the, again, the Clone Wars and the Rebels. So I get it that if you've never seen him before, it did look very okay corral style, but um, yeah, it definitely fit his character. And yeah, when he took out, you know, both Cobb and and his, I don't even know what the other guy's name was, but it was just like, yep, 
I was pretty much, I'm like, oh, oh, do not draw your gun. You're going to die. I was like, you're going to die. <laughs> Cad's going to take you out, man. So, so I think that was part of it too. You, you, you had seen those other, uh, yeah. you know, those other uh, shows with him in it and with Ahsoka in it and, and all that lore behind it. And so there was more foundation to what you saw in this episode than what I or someone else who hadn't seen those things saw. And I think that that impacted. So it was very, this episode was very focused on fan more service. of the ultra. The, yeah, it was fan yep. service, like you said. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, and that's an interesting thing. And, and we've talked about this before because there was another episode where I missed a lot. And uh, thank you, by the way, to Huntress for pointing out a lot of the Easter eggs. Yeah. But I, I, okay. So as someone who has watched the Clone Wars and Rebels, now it's been a while since I've watched these. I did not memorize them. And so, you know, I missed some things. I want to go back and rewatch them now just because it's getting me excited to do that. But here's the thing. On one hand, you're getting the fan service. So those who have watched Clone Wars and Rebels, maybe even read the books, you know, like with Grand Admiral Thrawn and stuff. I mean, it's like, it's like nerdgasmic. I mean, everybody's freaking (laughs) out. Like, this is the greatest thing ever. This is the best Star Wars ever, you know. And then there's the other group of people who are coming to The Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett. They've not watched all those uh, animated series. They haven't read the books. All they've seen are the movies. And right. so they're watching this and they're going, wait, who's this and what's going on now? Right, right. So there's a, on one hand, I'm excited as a fan who's seen it all and, and read some of the books. But I, th- there is a bit of a problem with that though, because for those of you who haven't, you're missing stuff. I mean, you really are. Right. Like, are you missing the story? You even said there's not a lot of story development. So then the answer is actually, yes, you are missing out on some of the story because you didn't know this stuff. And I think that's actually a weakness in writing. I think it's good that they're giving fan service, but I think it's bad that they're not bringing in the new fans very well. I agree hundred percent. I agree with you hundred percent on that statement. Yeah. So you're right. So on my hand, I can understand why you're thinking, eh, this episode was okay and it didn't have a whole lot to it. Um, From your perspective and your lack of having not seen all of that stuff, you're absolutely Right. right. So right. I didn't have that foundation. So. Yeah. And I think so that's I, a bit of a yeah. problem, but hearing it from you makes me appreciate it more. So, uh, uh but it's just a, if you don't have somebody to tell you that stuff, yeah, it's going to be a little more lackluster just naturally. So, but I do think that it is a problem in writing, whether it's, you know, book of Boba Fett, whether it's Mandalorian, whether it's anything in general, I mean, even Cobra Kai, we've talked about, it's like, they've, yeah. there's a lot of fan service. You didn't, but they did it in a way that if you hadn't seen the movies or didn't remember the movies, you still got the story that you needed and it was fine with this. If you haven't seen that you've missed out and you are missing out. So, so that's, I don't know. So I also want to bring up, so we got to see one thing I kind of enjoyed was that we got to see the, just the very start of the birth of Luke's Jedi Academy, his legendary Jedi Academy. That was cool because these, these, uh, these droid robots were just starting to pile stones on top of each other. Um, and just the foundations were there basically. And it was just very, very basic when the Mandalorian arrives at this planet, wherever, whatever it is. Uh, and, and you find out that it's the start of his Academy. Um, but what related to that, you know, how he was, he was hoping that Grogu would be his first student at this new Academy, but he gives, uh, Mandalorian shows up, gives, says, I, you know, I wants to see Grogu. Ahsoka says, you can't see Grogu. He's, he needs to focus on his training. And I was like, okay, give him this for me. And then, so she gives it to Luke and Luke says, okay, Grogu, you have a present from the Mandalorian. And also here's Yoda's lightsaber. Now that was cool, by the way, to see Yoda's yeah, that was lightsaber. Cool. Okay. So his, pre- the Mandalorian's present was the Beskar spear. She melted it down into something and this is what it was. Well, it, it ended up looking exactly like a, a Lord of the Rings mithril, yeah. you know, the, the mithril <laughs> the vest that I Frodo thought. gets, right? So, I was like, <laughs> the gift of mithril. <laughs> that's exactly what I thought when I saw it. Oh, it's, myth, it's, it's Bilbo's uh, yeah. vest. Um, so the point I'm making is that he, he gives him this choice. Okay, Grogu, you can either have this gift from the Mandalorian or this lightsaber. It's one of the two. If you choose the lightsaber, you will continue to be my student. If you choose the, the armor you will not be my student anymore and you'll have to go with the Mandalorian. I had a real issue with that decision. I'm sure there's a reason for it, but that the choice he was given, 
I didn't, it didn't sit well with me. I was like, why can't you have both? Why can't a Jedi have some sort of protection from lightsabers and blasters and also a lightsaber? I didn't understand that. It didn't you know, sit with me. And that, it got me thinking a little bit too, because, okay, so the reason is this, just so you know, here's, here's the blanket reason is that Jedi are not allowed to have attachments. We saw this with Anakin. He was attached to his mom. Everything oh, about see. his mom and then Padme turned him to the dark side. 100%. Interesting. Yeah. So it, it's okay. all about attachments. And, and now granted, if you were to watch episodes four, five, and six, there's not a whole lot of, I'm sorry, movies four, five, and six, just to right. make sure we're on the right. same page. Yeah. There's not a whole lot about the attachments. There's a little bit in there, but it, they really start delving into that in, in movies one, two, and three. And then of course right. there's, there's a lot of lore behind that, but a lot about the attachment Jedi aren't, aren't, they're not allowed to be, you know, attached with relationships and stuff like that because it's too tempting to go down to the dark side and that kind of, that's the main reason right there. Attachments. Okay. Now okay. on the, and so that's why I understood when Ahsoka came, you know, when, when Mando's like, dude, I just want to see him. I flew all this way. And Ahsoka's like, right. Yeah. But that I understood and it sucked, yeah. but I understood on the other hand, it's kind of like, does it, you're right. Does a, a, uh, Beskar armor actually create attachment? Yeah. It more, does, more so it than Yoda's him. lightsaber. Well, no, I mean, because, because the... Yoda's lightsaber is the path of the Jedi. And here's okay. the thing, like he's giving him a lightsaber, you know, Yoda's lightsaber right now, but eventually in order to complete his Jedi training, he'll have to build his own. So right. it, it's okay, his like yes, training yeah. saber essentially is what it is Got for it. now anyway. Um, and so no, that doesn't create an attachment because you know, did he know Yoda? No, it's just more of like, Hey, here's it's, it's your size. We're going to get you trained and stuff. So I guess I could, I can understand why the armor would create that level of attachment, but at the same time, it's like, well, would it probably, so that's real. I mean, I don't know that, and that it's a tough one too, because it's kind of like, well, wearing the armor still is not bad or unless I guess here would be the other thing. Hmm. Maybe Luke holds on to it and you know, let's say Grogu chooses the lightsaber. We don't know. He chooses the lightsaber. <laughs> And he finishes his Jedi training and then Luke says, you've earned this armor now. Go ahead and wear it, you know, because you already made your choice and you've already shed your attachments, essentially. So here you are. He might do that. I mean, we don't know, but obviously I, we didn't see the choice. So I have to I have to end this with a uh, with a pretty obvious prediction to what's going to happen with that. We, you know, the, the episode ends with him having to decide between the two. Right. More or less. I'm assuming. And, yeah. Yeah. And so. I mean, that, that's I how think, it ended. Yes. I think we know what Grogu is going to choose and there are clues to that. I think he's going to choose the armor in Mandalorian because uh, number one, why else would they have him? Why else would they fill us in on what he's doing? And number two, when the Nubian fighter was being built, you know, when what's her name hogged oh, out that, yeah. that droid space and then put a little plastic dome over top of it. Mm -hmm. I thought for sure that BD-1 would go with him and take that spot. Yeah. Well then, but that didn't quite make sense because BD one doesn't need a dome around him to survive in space and all that stuff. So Grogu is the only likely person to take that spot behind the Mandalorian on his Nubian fighter. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to happen. I'm just very certain of it. So I, I'm I'm pretty certain that that he's going to choose the armor and go with the Mandalorian to help him. See, because of that, you're probably right. But I'm not going to lie that that would be really <laughs> disappointing for me. I, I would because see it's that, so obvious. <laughs> well, no, because then it's like, okay, fine. You know, because we have to have a show and we have to have baby Yoda in the show. He's going to choose the wrong path. And he, now he's going to be tempted by the dark side and it's going to cause all this problem. And it's just uh, like, uh, yeah, you're probably <laughs> right. But I, I hope they don't, I hope he chooses the lightsaber. Yeah. I would, I, do I don't too, know. But, I, I really do. But yeah. then again, it could show where, you know, okay, Grogu cho chooses the Mandalorian and the armor, and oh, well, now you're starting to see where Luke's Jedi Academy is starting to crumble, even though it's just started. Right, and right. then you see the whole Ben Solo scenario where that started to crumble, and then Luke, that's why I ah, asked, screw this, I was not a teacher, I shouldn't have done this. I don't know. That's true. It's that's a, a good, yeah, that's, that, I, I had not put those dots, I had not connected those dots, so that's a really good point. Yeah, we'll this, may, this may very well be contrived as the the beginning of that failure of Luke to, yeah. to resurrect the Jedi order. Um, 
you know, honestly, I, I'm starting to think that the main focus on this series is a little too lame, if you will. Like stopping the stopping the Pike Syndicate from trying to take over Tatooine just feels too limited to me. It does. Uh, it's just not nearly epic enough, in my opinion. Even The Mandalorian had a more epic, like the ending of The Mandalorian was pretty epic, mm-hmm. right? I mean, it was, it was, you had this big bad in Moff Gideon and there, it just was, there was more, there felt like there was more at stake. But in the in this first season of Boba Fett, it's just, all that's at stake is this. They're just trying to stop a crime syndicate from taking over Tatooine. That's the thing and about this. It just this. feels little. This whole series has felt kind of bizarre to me. Like they really didn't have a whole direction. I mean, you're seeing yeah. okay, cool, Boba Fett. Here, I mean, if you look at this, here's what we've got. We got Boba Fett. He survived. He got out of the Sarlacc pit. He mm-hmm. goes through back to treatments. He finds himself. Has a come to Jesus moment. Now he's a changed man, you know, goes and lives with the tribes, uh, you know, uh, so now he's a sand person in his heart, you know, and now he's respectful and benevolent. Uh, okay. So, oh, oh, but I'm going to take over Jabba's position because, you know, like I'm, I'm a changed man, but I'm going to kill Bib Fortuna. That's weird. Uh, and now I'm going to take over. Well, why? Well, maybe I'm going to be more be- benevolent. I don't know. Oh, but there's the syndicate. Okay. So let's fight them. And, you know, it, it is this kind of this weird, like, I don't really know the point either, to be completely honest. (laughs) So they got four episodes in and then they said, hey, all right, let's go back to the Mandalorian for two episodes. Oh, now we're back to a story. We've got this cool story. You know what the he's out of the Mandalorian order now. Um, Oh, well, now he's got this armor for Grogu. He's got the the dark saber. Oh, now you're seeing Grogu and Luke. Yeah, we're seeing all this development and we still haven't seen anything with with Boba Fett. And then I'm thinking, okay, episode seven, they've raised the stakes, by the way. So, yeah. you know, Boba Fett's got his Gamorrean guards and he's got his, you know, Power Rangers and now he's got the <laughs> Rancor and he's got Chrysanthemum. Oh, now he's got the Mandalorian, but oh, the syndicates, man. Now they've got Cat Bane and okay, things are just escalating. True. Well, but again, but for what? I mean, what's the point? And I think And how many more episodes are there? 1. Was it So 7's the last episode. This is it. Yeah, the, the, this is the penultimate. I, I don't see how they're going to wrap everything up in one more episode. It well, they're not. It's, to it's going to be a, a cliffhanger. It, hopefully, yeah. And, and, and I say this, hopefully it is a cliffhanger. I, I, even though I'm, I'm ragging on this episode and, and in the series in general, I still want to keep watching. Uh, it's, still, it's still better Star Wars than the sequels, in my opinion. So um, it is. Yeah. So it, I, mean, I, I want to see it keep going. But I love this. I like the series. I love the last two episodes. Mm hmm. I almost feel like though that maybe there's a grander plan. I'm not entirely sure, but I, I think what would serve them well if they really wanted to do this correctly is they stop splitting it up into Book of Bubble Fett and the Mandalorian and all that and just create like a new story. You know, like they had Rebels and, and Clone Wars and stuff. Right. Create a new name and bring all of the stories in. Do stuff with Boba Fett. Yeah. Do stuff with the Mandalorian. Do stuff with Luke and Grogu. Do stuff with Ahsoka. Do stuff with Grand Admiral Thrawn, you know? Because all of these weird little crossover things, which, again, I'm enjoying them. It's just there's no rhyme or reason to why did they create the book of Boba Fett in the first place? There was really no okay. reason to create this series if you think about it. They should have just done Mandalorian Season 3 and had Boba Fett as part of in, his yeah. story. Right. So yeah. it, it is kind of weird the direction. I don't know if it was a cash grab, like, oh, cool, we're doing a Boba Fett. Everyone's going to watch it. Yeah, yeah but because look how it's disapp- Boba Fett. But look how disappointed so many of the fans are. Right. Because Boba Fett's not what they imagined him that he would be like. Right. Yeah. So, and I, I mean, honestly, no. I don't think they expected that because almost every Star Wars fan that I've talked to has kind of seen this series as like, meh. Yeah. And it's like, that's. I don't know. I don't know why they, so I'm just saying like they, they need to take a step (laughs) back and go to a larger picture, you know, do like a star Wars, whatever, instead of a Boba Fett series and do something larger and bring all the other stuff in. Let's see the development between return of the Jedi and you know, the, the bait. Well, episode seven, (laughs) (laughs) I'm just saying, let's, let's see what happened during those years, you know? Sure. Yeah. What happened yeah. with the and they might Imperial do that. Remnant they might... and up to the New Order? I mean, what happened? Yeah, they might do that. And and yep. and if we're really lucky, they'll do it in a way that is epic enough for the Star Wars name, which a lot of Star Wars properties have not been, in my opinion. Yeah. They just haven't lived up to the Star Wars name. Star Wars in general, everything that Star Wars puts out should be epic in the extreme, in my opinion, because it's Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Why not? I mean, 
yeah. people people rag on Return of the Jedi all the time, but that battle at the end with the second Death Star that was epic. If you mm-hmm. if you if you cut out the Ewok parts, that and you can watch. And by the way, you can watch this on YouTube. You can watch the the final battle. Uh, somebody spliced it together and completely eliminated the Ewok parts. Oh my! And gosh. it was really exciting. I was like, nice. oh, this is so good. Yeah. You know, because in in the movie they go back and forth between what happens in space and what happens on the ground, back and forth, back and forth, and it worked fine. Yeah. But a lot of people, that's what the problem people had with Return of the Jedi was the Ewoks. Ewoks. Oh, yeah. It was the but beginning of the out, Jar Jar age. But if you cut that out, that whole that whole scene is just epic with a capital E. And yeah. it was really well done, especially for the time it was done. I, agree. I mean, I, I watched that now and it's like, that was from 1980, what, six, five, six? What was it? 1983. I mean, oh, 1983. Three yep. See, that's, I mean, this is crazy how good that was yeah. for 1983. So I just really think that Star Wars in general as a franchise needs to really pull themselves up uh, and 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 focus on being the coolest sci-fi out there because they should, they can yeah. and they should, and they haven't been. So, you know, what's interesting know to me is, uh, and I know this from storytelling, is that you do need to focus in on a couple of characters or else you don't, you just don't sure, care. fine. No, and that's I, great. I know no, that. You can still do that. You can no, still I know. do that. And I'm just saying, and I think, you know, they've got an Obi-Wan series coming out. I mean, right. if you look at actually the lineup, they've got too many coming. But okay. what they're doing is they're they're splitting it off into, you know, individual storylines, which, okay, that is cool. But then right. why was the Mandalorian taking up two episodes of the book of Boba Fett? Why didn't yeah. we have seven episodes with Boba? Let's see his development. Let's do it in a way that's really interesting. And then Mandalorian season three does its thing and then it crosses over and now you've got a combined show. You know, why didn't they yeah. do something? I mean, maybe that's what they're intending to do right now. I don't know, but it just feels like yeah. it feels like Boba got gypped, I guess is the best way to put it. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, whatever it's yeah. again, it's like the first four episodes yeah. were okay. These two were awesome, but they weren't Boba Fett. I, I don't know what they're going to do with it. I guess we just had to wait and see, but to me it was the best episode of the series to you. It was the worst. And, uh, <laughs> But again, this was not a Boba Fett episode. This was a Mandalorian episode. So we'll see yeah. what they do with episode seven. I It has the name episode seven, <clears throat> so I'm not very excited. <laughs> I'm not going to lie that actually I think we're going to be disappointed. I really yeah. do. I mean, I, I'm trying not to be like, I'm going to go in with the, okay, I'm going to, let's do this. We're going to have some fun and yeah. no expectations, I wanted, but I don't yeah. know. I want it to be good. So we'll, we'll, we'll just cross our fingers and, and hope for the best. That's all we can do as fans. Yeah. So, gosh, I don't know. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it more. We're, we're going through the whole series. We'll get episode seven coming out as well. And uh, don't forget to check out the real Brian show, the whole channel, everything we've, we've got our Friday episodes, but again, thanks for joining us comments below. Please, please send us some comments. Let us know what you thought of the episode. Let us know what we missed. Um, keep responses uh, yeah. respectful. We're all about respect and valuing each other here. So let's have some fun. But in the meantime, Enjoy your week. We'll uh, we'll talk to you next week. See you.